So we have seen two intuitive algorithms, insertion sort and selection sort, and both of them happen to be n squared. And we know that n squared is not good because if you go beyond, say, something like 10 to the power 4, already you will start getting algorithms which take too long to be feasible in practice. So we would like something which is better than n squared. Right? So how do we do this? So we need some other strategy. And so here is a strategy which is perhaps less intuitive than the one that we use for selection and insertion sort. Right? So in this strategy, we divide the list into two parts, into two equal parts, in fact, two halves. We separately sort the left half and the right half. So if we are still thinking in terms of that TA problem that we had, so this instructor gives the pile of papers to the TA, supposing the instructor has two TAs, then the instructor can give half the papers to one TA and the other half to the other TA and notice that these two halves can be sorted without reference to each other. Right? So each of them sorts their own half within that half. But now the two halves have to be reconciled right? because some papers in the bigger half in the first half might have uh, lower marks and some in the second half and so on. So then we have to take the two halves and combine them to get a fully sorted list. So there is some work to be done to combine the individual TA's answers or the TA's sorted bundles into one full sorted bundle. So this is the strategy that we are going to look at now. So in order to do this, let's focus on the second part which is the two TA's have come back right? and they have brought me two sorted bundles of answer books. How do I combine them into a single sorted bundle? Right? So I take two sorted lists A and B and I want to combine it into a single sorted list C. So this is something you can imagine again physically. You put them down, right? so each of them is sorted say with the highest mark on top. So which is the highest mark overall? Well, it is either the highest mark in the second pile or the highest mark in the first pile. So I look at the top two and I decide, oh, this is higher than this. So this must be the highest overall and I put it aside. Now I compare the highest here and the second paper that is visible here. Again, the higher of the two must be the highest overall in what's here. So I move that there. So now I will kind of in some sense in this physical process, I'm reversing the order, but the highest paper comes down, then the second highest paper comes down and so on. So by gradually, you know, running through these two piles systematically, I will be able to take them and run them down to get the pile in a single sorted order. Right? So I compare the first elements, move the smaller of the two or the bigger of the two to C and repeat until you exhaust the two. Right? So let's look at this example. So supposing just have an, a trivial thing. So the first uh, uh, pile has only three papers, 32, 74, 89. And let's say that 32 and 21 are the papers which I can see. So they are the top of the pile. So in my earlier thing, so this is slightly, so this is now my top. Right? So I start from the left hand side. So I compare 21 and 32 and I want the new list to also be in ascending order. So I compare 21 and 32 and the smaller of the two is the smallest overall. So I move the 21 out. Now I am focusing on the 55 compared to the 32. Right? So these are the two that are visible to me. If they were physically sitting there, I moved the smallest one out and this is what is visibly there for me. Right? So I now find the 32 smaller and I move it out. Now I am looking at these two because the other two are gone. So now 55 is smaller. Now I am looking at these two. Right? Now 64 is smaller. And finally I move 74 and 89 because there is nothing to compare them with anymore. So I only have to move from the first pile. Right? So this is how I would combine two sorted lists into a single sorted list. Right? So this is what is called merging. So merging is the operation that I need after I have got the thing sorted by two different TAs. So now I have to get the thing through sorted by these two different TAs. So how do I do it? This is the merge sort part. So I let n be the length. right? So I will first sort the beginning and then I will sort the end. So if I take the length and divide by 2, then I will get two segments of roughly equal length. So I will sort the first half and sort the second half. Okay? And then I will merge using the procedure which I just described, how to take two merge links and bring, give me back a fully merged list. Right? So I am merging these two sorted halves into B. And how do we sort these two halves? Well, we use the same procedure. That is, we will take each of them, break them up into two parts, sort the first half, sort the second half, merge. How will we do that? Again, we will break it up into two parts. And when do we stop? Well, we stop when we come to a list which has only one element. When it has only one element, then there is no more work to do. So let's look at an example. Right? So supposing we have eight elements, then I don't know how to sort these eight elements, so I divide it into the first half and the second half. Right? And I ask 
my two TAs to sort them. So they don't know how to sort them. So they find two friends and they pass them each the two halves. So the first half gets split into two lengths of two. The second half gets split into two lengths of two. So now I have four parts with two each. Now these two friends don't know how to do this either. So they each call two more friends and give them one paper each. Right? So now basically this has come like this. Right? So this is how they have split. So now the last guy in this list, the last set of TAs who have been roped into this job have an easy job because they have just got one paper. So they say, oh, this is easy, I can just give it back to you. So Mr. 43 says, I am done, Mr. 32 says, I am done and so on. So all these last eight TAs report that they have sorted their work. So now the second level TAs have to merge them. So I have to take these two and merge them, right. So if I merge them, then 32 is smaller than 43, so I will replace the list at this level by the sorted version. I will do the same thing with 22 and 78, here nothing changes. The next one 57 comes before 63, the next one 13 comes before 91. So now I am finished with this level and I can throw away the singleton thing, so all those TAs are now dismissed. right? So now I have the sorted lists of length 2, so I combine the sorted lists of length 2 into two sorted lengths of length 4. Right? So from the left hand side, I now get the list 22, 32, 43, 78, which is the sorted version of this, right. And from the right hand side, I get 13, 57, 63, 91, which is the sorted version of this. How do I get a sorted version of this? I apply that merge function, right. So I look at the smaller of the two, I pull out the 13, then I pull out the 57, then I pull out the 63, then I pull out the 91, okay. Now again, I have got these two sorted sequences of length 4, so I can throw away this uh, smaller sequences that I had used in between. And now I do a single merge here. So I say, okay, I want 13 first, then I want 22, then I want 32, then I want 43, then I want 57, then I want 63, then I want 78, and then I want 91, right? So this is my merge. So if I apply this merge, I get the sorted sequence on top and I'm done. So then I can throw away this and this is my final answer. So this is how merge sort works, right? So, <coughs> so merge sort is an example of something called divide and conquer. You break up the problem into disjoint parts, solve each part separately. Remember the two TAs could go off into their respective places and work without having to talk to each other. And then when the solutions are done, you have to combine them, right? That's a general step. So there are two parts. One is breaking it up. In this case, breaking it up was easy. I just take the first half and the second half. And then there's a combining part. I take the solution given to me by the first TA solution given by second TA and I have to merge them, right? So that's divide and conquer. So let's look at this merging thing in more detail. So if I want to combine two sorted lists and I want to write the actual code for this, then I have to look at these boundary conditions which we came to at the end of the thing that we were executing. So if one of the lists is empty, we just copy the other list, right? So if I've run out of things in A, then I just take everything that is in B and put it at the end of C. Similarly, if everything in B is empty, then I just copy whatever is in A into C. And if they are both not empty, then I look at the first element that is visible or the first element I'm scanning currently for both these lists and I take the smaller of these two and I append it to C, right? So this is how merge works. So we repeat this until everything has been moved. So this is the merge uh, function which we will quickly look at. So we have two lists and they could be of different lengths, right? So A is of length M and B is of length N, right? So now what I will do is I will have my three lists, right? I have A and B which are of length M and N and I have my C, right? And at any given point, I'm going to be looking at some element here which I'll call I, some element here which I'll call J and some element here which I'll call K, right? So as I progress, I'm walking down these three lists, the two lists that I'm scanning to uh, uh, examine and the third list C which I'm building up. So I have these three indices I, J and K which are zero initially. And I have this new list C which is empty initially, right? So this is what I need to do to manipulate. So now I go through these three steps, right? So these three steps are here. So if A is empty, so when is A empty? When I have reached, I has reached the end, right? So if I is equal to M, that means A is empty. Then I just copy B into C. So I use this Python function called extend, which will take one list and extend it with another list, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
in that process move k by a whole lot right i'm going to move k by however many letters i moved i values i moved from b which is it was at j and i moved from j to n so n minus j elements have been shifted okay if that is not the case if a is not empty i check if b is empty in which case symmetrically i have j has gone to n right in which case i extend c by a and i move k by n minus i this should be sorry right n minus i and finally if neither of them is empty then i compare ai and bj and if ai is smaller than bj then i append ai and i move i and k and otherwise i append bj and i move j and k right so in i push the indices either i moves and k moves or j moves and k moves right now when do i stop well i have to eventually move m plus n elements into k into c so k has to go from 0 to m plus n so so long as k is not yet m plus n i have work to do but when k reaches m plus n i'm done right so that becomes my terminating condition for this merge function so having got the merge function what does merge sort look like actually it's much simpler than merge as as you would expect so if you have a list which has at most one element is nothing to be done otherwise you sort the first half sort the second half and merge them right so this is what it is you find the length of the list you want to do if the length length of the list is one or less then you just return the list that you got saying is already sorted otherwise you recursively call merge sort on the first half and the second half now remember that this will stop at n by 2 minus 1 right so the list will be disjoint but which will cover the entire thing nothing will be left out right so 0 to n by 2 minus 1 will be in part l and n by 2 to n the end will be in part r now having got both of these i just apply my merge function to get a list which combines the two into a new list b and then i return b right so this is merge sort right to, to, to summarize merge sort uses divide and conquer to sort a list we divide the list into two halves sort each half and merge the sorted halves right so why did we come to this at all is because we said that insertion sort and selection sort were not acceptable in terms of their complexity because they were order n squared and we wanted to get something which is better than order n squared so to complete our discussion of merge sort we have to analyze it which will be a separate exercise